can't complain. Can't complain. Can't complain. Oh, oh, Mateus, uh, you and the other podium finishers uh, have prizes. I, of course, I forgot to send them until just moments ago. But uh, check your email. Congratulations. Um, let's see what else is happening. We have um, talked about wallpaper patterns now for three lessons. And uh, we're going to keep talking about it because they, well, let's put it this way. Out of the 16 people who started the Kahoot contest on Tuesday, only six people finished. Ten people stopped doing it. So that kind of tells me that well, one, a minute is really, you know, not enough time to, to do one uh, confidently. And also that some people still need to, uh, you know, see more examples, uh, do more practice. I can do quite a bit for you as, as, you know, you learn these things, but you really have to roll up your sleeves and uh, practice a bunch yourself. You don't just learn this stuff by listening and watching to somebody you, you have to do that, but then you also do have to practice um, by yourself or with a friend, you know, try to make it fun somehow. Um, you know, you can hook up with somebody from class or, you know, maybe maybe your parents know how to do this. Uh, not many people do, by the way. You, you're kind of in a, in a unique club, um, not a very populous club. Uh, learning about wallpaper patterns and how to analyze these kinds of symmetries. Uh, so that's that's exciting. I mean, you, you guys are in a, in unique programs uh, in New York City in a very unique school. So it, it only makes sense that you learn things that others don't know about. So it's, uh, it's our little secret. But you know, in a job interview, uh, if you ever see a pattern and you know, and, and like maybe a the sofa or, or chair or something, and you're, you're not quite sure you're getting the job, just bust out the, you know, oh, oh, you guys like that PMM pattern, huh? You like those primitive cells? Yeah, I'm not really a centered cell person myself. So they'll say, what are you talking about? What What is this nonsense? Oh, 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 you, oh, oh okay, let me tell you. And then uh, the job is yours. No, that's not a guarantee, but it's, it's an endorsement of the importance of these skills. You never know. But, you know, this this definitely gives you a deeper understanding of of patterns. I mean, there's, there's no question about it. Um, and most of you are going into some kind of visual field. I, I'm hoping. I, mean, I hope everybody gets to do what they love. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's always better to know more. Uh, about uh, things that you're that you're working with and, and, and on. So yeah, uh, let's let's keep going. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, I mean examples are everywhere, right? So I'm gonna use some examples that were brought to me last semester as part of this um, uh, course, and I I assigned a project. I'm gonna assign the same project to you guys um, today. So the project was basically to put some uh, patterns together. Uh, in fact, uh, what you will be submitting are representatives from the different rotational categories. So there are five rotational categories, right? You've got the no rotation group or the you know branch of that flowchart. You've got the twofold threefold, fourfold, and the sixfold. So you've got five different rotational branches or, or uh, categories, or classes. And what I'd like for you to do as your project is to take a picture, a real photograph. You know, you take it with your phone. Um, you don't have to. Do you, I guess you still call them photographs, right? <laughs> Where you take them uh, with your cell phone, they're still called pho photographs, uh, not just pics. But anyways, you take uh, take pictures of real things. Like I, honestly, I don't I don't have to look 
far to find something. Like this is just kind of drying. I mean, uh, it was cold, so somebody wore this recently, and I, I can see patterns right here that you could use as examples. This looks like actually pretty cool. It's uh, looks like a, a P4 pattern, just um, just right here, and here's different. This, these would really be more appropriate as border patterns, but you can also picture them as uh, expanding out. Here's another one. This looks like a, a representative of the uh, 180, the twofold pattern. So anyway, uh, so today I'm going to take my examples from the projects that were submitted last semester. Uh, so. You can already start thinking. I'm going to talk more about the project, of course, and, and also post it on Blackboard after class. But um, you can already start thinking, OK, so I'm going to have to submit five photographs. In fact, let me say that you can skip one. So four. Four will get you full points. Uh, you don't have to find every single category. So if you find like a like a no cat, you know, no rotation, and a, and a twofold, and a fourfold, and a sixfold. That's fine. Okay, so that that's going to be due on Tuesday. Again, I'll I'll talk more about it um, in a little bit. Are there any questions before we begin? Now, one thing that you'll notice when you're doing these out there in real life uh, is that a lot of the patterns that you see aren't as perfect as the ones that we've been looking at that are you know computer generated and and it you know with the with the design software it's, it's just so easy to get it perfect right but when you when you see a pattern that was printed or you know maybe maybe it was even printed by hand um, or, or then uh, you know some other methods, or or maybe it was a pattern like like this one is actually knitted. So you'll you'll notice that they're not perfect in the sense that like uh, something that you could do on Illustrator would be, but um, you you just kind of have to go with the intention. What is the intention of the maker? Um, you know maybe one is a little shorter than the other, but you know are they intended to represent the same thing, and a lot of times they are. And so we're going to see some of that today, that the real world patterns are not always so perfect, but we still, uh, you know, we still kind of take them as those perfect patterns and just think about the intention of the designer. Here's an example of that. It's hard to say if those lines were like intended to be a little bit um, angled or if they were you know meant to be straight and this just kind of came out um, same thing with the squares because some of them are not so squarey <laughs> some of them are more like rectangles like, like like this one this piece here is really a rectangle as opposed to this one that which seems more of a square so I you, you can kind of go either way. You can be like real strict about stuff, or you can just think, oh, I, I think that they were probably meaning to print, you know, with squares and straight lines. And if that was the case, um, then uh, I can I can see that. Actually, let me ask you, what uh, what, what do you see as rotations? You know, if if we assume that the line the lines are supposed to be straight. Know, vertically and horizontally and we can do a different analysis thinking that you know maybe they intended them to be a little angled and then we can talk about what that means to the analysis but let's let's first uh, think of it as um, that all those rectangles are really squares and all those lines are straight then what do you see as the uh, rotation here Phi. Is that high phi or low phi? I, I, I don't know. Like when you raise your hand, I guess that's a high phi, right? I guess so. Um, would you put it like in the center of the lines and it be 90 degrees? 
uh, as in uh, right here? Yeah. Center of the line. That is only a twofold rotation center. Oh, okay, so that would be 180. Yes, and I'm going to leave it there because it is a rotation center. There's, there's nothing uh, nothing wrong with that. And here's another one. Can you um, also put one right in the middle of the square? Yes, so, so check this out. This here, this guy, would be a 90 degree rotation. Again, right now I'm assuming that those lines are straight, but you know, the more I look at it, I'm beginning to think that uh, they were made like that on purpose. And actually that is kind of what is making this pattern look more um, organic, I guess you could say, more natural, more, you know, it's probably computer designed like everything else that they just kind of had to figure out how do we make it look more earthy and, and more, inviting and, and, and human. So you know, a lot of the game these days is you we want to avoid that kind of sterile look that you would get from that perfect pattern that you design on, on Illustrator. And instead you well you might start there and then then just mix it up, mess it up on purpose um, to, to make it look like the way you want. So it, that that could be what's going on here, but let's let's for the moment and, and when I, I keep talking about let's let's assume that the lines are straight. So I'm I'm talking about these horizontal lines, right? Because they are a little bit angled, as if by mistake, but of course it's not a mistake. But anyway, so that there would be a um, actually a reflection line there, right? And you also have reflection lines vertically. But do you have the diagonals? Careful with this one now. No. That's correct. So, what would you what what would you ultimately call this thing? P four would give you half the credit because we you know we we can't ignore the uh, reflection lines. So it comes down to whether you see the if a reflection lines going in two directions only or four directions. B four G R P four G. That is what I would say. Yes. P four G. P four Majiggy. So this is assuming that those lines are straight. And you know, sometimes you're kind of confronted with these questions when you're um, taking your own pictures. You think, oh, did they do that on purpose? Because uh, if it's done on purpose, then you kind of want to go with that usually. But if it's a mistake, then you, you might want to overlook that. And by mistake, I, I mean, oh, yeah, there, there might be imperfections there that might actually be on purpose, but still, you, uh, some are not uh, on purpose and some might be on purpose. It's hard to say. But you know, a lot of times we ignore the imperfections and go with just kind of the intent. Uh, so anyway, so let's let's say for a second that, um, you, you know, I, I can see that this row is very much straight and this row is straight, but these these rows in the middle they uh, like this one and, and I'll, I'll put it like this. So every other row seems to be kind of angled and, and every other one is not. So that would actually, if, if that really was the case and that was the intent, then that should uh, factor into our analysis. And that first point that I put down uh, is still a rotation center. But some of the other ones would not be. Uh, this this point would still be a rotation center. And, and this point would be a rotation center, but you don't have a rotation in the middle of those squares. Which is, that's different. 
these are rotations though. These are all twofold rotation centers. And I guess that's pretty much all we got because we don't have any reflections now. And we don't have any any glide reflections either. So this would be just a P2 if if the intent was to have you know straight rows and then twisted row or angled rows straight angled like that so again it's hard to say and these are tricky um, you don't have to be perfectly right on everything to get full points for that project i would not put something this tricky on the test just so you know okay let's uh, let's move on so here's something that looks like another textile. And so when you see something like this, there's some fundamental things that you have to notice, which, for instance, these lines, these um, vertical lines like this, these are thicker than these, these lines, the white, the white line in the middle. So that that's clearly intentional, right? So that that actually would factor into your analysis. For example, that would mean that there is no rotation center in the middle of that parallelogram. That that is not a rotation center because those every other vertical line is thicker and every other vertical line is there. So that, that makes it so that that center of the parallelogram is not a rotation center. So I'm just going to take that out. Uh, and so you have to, that, that's like a, you know, those are fundamentally different. It's, it, it's, that's per design. But, but what else is going on here? Steve, what do you think? We don't give up. Nope. No, we won't. We're gonna we're gonna carry it out. Anybody uh, want to take a stab at the um, rotation? One eighty. I appreciate that. Can you can you put a, a rotation center, Mateus, uh, to where you think might, one might be? That is not a rotation center. I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, take this corner. A 180 would toss it over here. Is it over there? No. No, no, it's not. No, no. So this is all good. Okay, uh, Fiona? I was going to say none, but I feel like that might be wrong. Well, if it's not, if it's not none, then what, what could it be? Uh, it, it is none. There, there is no rotation. Oh, okay. There. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 one of those. When you see just a trapezoid, I mean, I'm sorry, a parallelogram. You're, at least my mind is automatically thinking 180, of course. But the way that these are put together, you just don't have that. So no rotation in this one. Uh, we and then, but there have, is reflection. We do have reflection lines like that one, and that one, right? So, okay, so what else? What else? So right now we're at no rotation reflections. So the question is now about the glide reflections. Is there, is there a line that's not a reflection line that's, that is a glide reflection line? Now, let me, let me explain why that little extra clause has to be there. Let's let's look at this line here. This where I, I wiggled my my pen right there. Okay, that line is is a reflection line, but it's it is also a glide reflection line. You see the X there. So I'm going to just zigzag my way through this design. 
vertically like this. So these are glides. Right? So that reflection line is also, it serves also as a glide reflection line. But that's not the question. The question was, are there any glide reflection lines that are not reflection lines? And the answer to that question is no. So this then would be a PM pattern. So all it really has is those reflection lines, which happen to also be glide reflection lines, but they're, they're not in question here. Now, let me show you this. If there was a glide reflection line, it would be exactly in the middle of the two different vertical reflections. If, so this is a, this is a big if here. So if there was a glide reflection, it would be that one. But uh, that's not a that's not a glide reflection. See, if if you look at a point, you know any point, is there this kind of zigzagging action? Does that this does this blue X go to a bottom corner here? No, no, it doesn't. Right. It, it, it doesn't do a zigzag. It, um, it would have to be in a, like, <laughs> I, I think of these as like, um, like a water container. Where I put the X is where the water would go. Like if you just had a little bit of water in a container. Um, so they would pack into that X. Here, that's not, that's not the lowest point. You know, that, that's not the same thing. So this, this uh, um, it doesn't have any glides, basically. The blue line is not a glide reflection line. All right, let's uh, move from water buckets to beautiful floral design in, in two colors. Or two non-colors, should I say. Are white and black considered colors? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're not really considered colors. Aren't they just absence of light and excess of light? Yeah, something like that, yeah. I remember that used to be a big argument at my school. This kid always would go around and be like, why is it color? Why is it color? And it's like, no, it's not. Yeah. Um, well, this is about the the coolest design you can make without any colors. And you you have to think about it in terms of rotations first. Um, you know, in this class, we don't really talk about how um, artistically, um, what, what are the art, you know, artistic dimensions of this thing um, or, or merits we talk more about just the um, how does uh, how does the thing whatever the thing is get repeated what are the symmetrical laws that govern the repetition so let's focus on something let's let's grab something and and see where it's repeated see how it's repeated so i'm going to take the obvious one first so that that flower there and i'll just take the part of some some other stuff. Notice that that thing is here as well, and it, it's exactly the same way. Also here, exactly the same way. Also here, exactly the same way. And I'm not seeing any other repeats. So I would say no rotation. Also, you, you can't have anything else either. You can't have any reflections. You can't have any glide reflections. So this is just a P1. And this is a very popular way of doing patterns. You just make something that when you kind of stamp it, um, you know, horizontally, um, you kind of stack them up, make a bunch of rows and stack them, or make a bunch of columns and, and, and put them side by side. Uh, and and just you just kind of fill the plane like that. And it, um, 
it can also you know yield really nice results but as far as symmetry there really isn't anything other than the translation okay moving on okay so here again these are all pictures that my students from last semester submitted and here's something pretty cool now this might be a slightly tricky thing because of that over under kind of that kind of uh, braiding that's happening here uh, vertically now if we really got into the the uh, detail here of course the whole thing is knitted and i i can't even see the detail on it but uh you know that there's just a lot of over under everywhere right but let's let's go ahead and focus on the over under patterns that you see in these columns uh does someone else have uh fiona i appreciate your uh, willing to answer but i'm gonna ask someone else because I've got like, you know, 20, 20 students here, and uh, I want to hear from some other people um, every now and again. Uh, so uh, how about um, Frank? Uh, what do you, Frank, what do you think? What, what's, your, what's, what's the good word on this guy? Can you just repeat the question? Uh, yeah, what's the rotation? It's always the first question. Oh, it's the first question. Would it be, I would say 180. I might be wrong about that. Well, I, you know, everything I do, I might be wrong about everything. Uh, but um, you, you just got to go with it. You know, <laughs> you, you, you can't uh, spend your life second guessing or third guessing. So I like your idea. Let's do it. Let's, let's test out some points. Okay. So we're just going to put some points down and see if they work like maybe but does someone want to contribute let's go with 180. it certainly can't be 90 it can't be 120 it can't be any of those so it's either no rotations at all or 180. i mean i i i'll give you that much so uh frank you're you're in good you're sitting pretty so but can we find a 180-degree rotation center? Nice, nice. That's it. That's a good one. That's a good one. Also here, wait. Also here, right? So these, these points are 180s. And you also have... Or do you? Maybe you don't. Um, yeah, I think those those are it. Those two types. Okay, so we're in the 180 branch, and next question, as always, is about reflections. This is where it gets a little interesting, and and I'm not. I'm, I'm going to say that this is probably not typical of this kind of pattern. And the reason I say that is because it was actually a little surprising to me that I saw a reflection here vertically like this. Because you, see, you, gotta, you gotta pay attention to the over and the under, right? So here's a, here's a piece, I'll, I'll just focus on this. That's going over, and this is like the overpass, you know, going this way. So here's the associated mirror image and that's also going as an overpass like that so that's a reflection see they, they've consciously uh, not made those braids identical so there's like a little half drop uh, with every column as you go Professor. So, yes 
Hi, sorry. Where is the 180 degree again? Just. Oh, so you know, we have we have uh, this kind of this this new red dot there in the middle, and also in this little um, little crevice, kind of between the uh, between the uh, um, what would you call it? those threads? Not thread doesn't make sense because thread is like the, the the string, but but in that this this is also a 180. Okay, thank you. It this is a little tricky, but it, it's it's so cool because you see this stuff all the time, right? But um, what, what's surprising to me about this that it actually does have reflections. So this guy here is reflected on this, and and the same thing uh, in this next one. That that this this again is reflected like that. All right, so we've have we've got um, 180. We got reflections, uh, at least vertically. Do, is there any other type of reflection here, or do we just have those reflections in that one direction? How about um, Nicolette? What do you think? Do you see any other reflections other than those verticals? Correct. Thank you. And what does that make it? Now that we've answered that question, what does that make this pattern? PMG. Bingo. P-M-G. Check. All right. Moving on. This is kind of exciting, right? A little bit. What do you think, Steve? I'm with you to the end of the line. Good. That's what I thought. Okay. Now, what is happening? With this one seems like a lot um, I'm seeing things did we see this pattern already something like it I think I had this in that um, in my in my opening PowerPoint but I don't think I had any color on it I think I just had a black and white one yeah yeah I'm pretty sure about that uh, so, uh, Catherine, do you want to put in a 120? I see them too. That's it. Good. Great. So that's a 120. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Anything else? Mateos, you see a 180. Can you can you put one of them in there? Perfect. And Fiona, you had something else? I was going to say maybe 60, but I don't think that would actually work. Well, if there was a 60, where would you put it? Right in the center of this. See, the thing is. We can always just try it. When you put the point down, it definitely helps you visualize how that rotation would actually occur. And and you're absolutely right about that. That's a 60 degree. And this this one would then be the I always the forget to not look at colors. That's what checks me up is the colors. Yeah. So yeah. that works you about the colors. Yeah. Yeah, so we have um a 60, a 120, and a 180. And rotation-wise, it doesn't get more any more exciting than that. Uh, three different kinds of rotations. So you just you just pick the uh, lowest one, the lowest number, 60, and 
let's go with that. So now we're in the bottom branch of that uh, flow chart. And so what do you think this would be? P6M. Do you really see mirror lines somewhere? No. No, no, I was thinking, yeah, yet again, the lines in between the, like, I, I'm going to draw really quickly what I was thinking. I was thinking down there, but these lines. Right. It, it's always the over-unders and, and, yeah. and little little things, little details like that that um, are definitely intentional and definitely take away any kind of reflection. So P6. All right. I don't know if this is from a vase or uh, maybe a could I guess be even some kind of a leather design design on leather. I I, I don't know, but this was turned in. The question is, as always. Um, what is the what are the rotations and then we'll pick the smallest one if you have multiple one twenty oh that's a bold statement let's see where would we have a one twenty Sometimes you have to do a little counting. Like I want to count these pedals. I want I want to see what's going on with these pedals, because they might prevent any kind of uh, symmetry that you think is there from happening. Oh, see, see, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh -huh. See, if if you didn't have these pedals and these other associated uh, designs, like you know these guys, and there's going to be ten of these as well. If you didn't have this inner stuff, then this the center point of this, you know, like the focal point there would be a fourfold rotation center. Same thing. Actually, maybe not the same thing. I was thinking also the centers here. Why is that not a fourfold? You know what? I wouldn't even call this a fourfold now that I think about it. Look at this distance here. And then look at this distance here. I think I would say intentionally different. So it's it's small vertically, or you know, and and and, and this uh, top and bottom here, but then it's bigger on the sides. So that's you know. That would probably make these all these rotations actually uh, 180s. I'm not seeing a 120 anywhere. And again, when you see these kinds of things out in, in real life, they're they have subtle things that make them interesting. That they they have they're flirting with some type of symmetry. And then I think most people would just kind of take that as yeah, it's yeah, it's got that kind of boring symmetry, but it's you know it's still cool looking. Uh, but instead, it only flirts with that boring symmetry because there's an actual difference here. This is not a P4M, like I think most people would uh, kind of jump to. Uh, what makes this interesting is that it's got those ten petals you know, instead of eight. Or 12, which would go with that fourfold uh, rotation. Uh, it's got 10 petals. It, it has to do with, um, I'm not going to get into this, but I will say that the concept of relatively prime numbers comes into play. 
um, and the and the greatest common factor. Anyway, um, twelve has a has has four as a factor, eight has four as a factor, but ten does not. So anyway, um, so this this is only a one eighty. Interestingly, and the question then becomes about the uh, reflections, and I see a bunch of reflections. There's no no problem with the reflections. So you've got reflections in two directions like this. And then, then it comes down to the um, last question between PMM and CMM. Are all rotation centers on reflection axes? And I'm going to put it in different color because it's, to me, it's just like a potential rotation center. But you could draw a dot here in the middle. Uh, in the middle of that uh, polygon formed by the reflection lines, you put a dot in the middle and you ask yourself, is that a rotation center? And that one's clearly not, right? So I don't have a way to erase it, but I'll just, uh, just talk about it. The yellow dot is not a rotation center. So this would then be a PMM. So it flirts with the idea of fourfold action, but uh, it really only has twofold and a PMM in the end. Pretty cool though. All right. Uh, so this is the kind of thing I was talking about earlier, where you know, in actuality, it's, it's not even close to like the kind of perfection that you could get with a computer. Uh, but it's so much more interesting and so much cooler looking that way. So we just have to go on kind of the intent. So the intention is that all those strands are the same, more or less. All those groups of strands, like you, you, you see these vertical groups of strands, that these would be the same width, right? So we're going we're gonna to go on that kind of assumption of, um, of perfection in a sense that we can use the implied perfection in our analysis. OK, so what do you think? Rotation first. How about, um, how about uh, ISIS? Or Sunaya, whoever makes it first. One twenty. Nah, it's a decent guess, but it happens to not be correct. Any guess is a good guess. Definitely don't leave anything blank. Okay, how about anyone else? Uh, Taylor, Katrina, I'm okay. Elena yourself right now so I'm not you're, you're what I, I didn't hear you I'm confused myself right now so I'm not oh. really sure okay all right um fair enough now whoever put that blue dot there that is not uh that is not a rotation center that one is the red dot so let me go ahead and uh so the red dot was put there. Okay, good. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so these these points are rotation centers, and they're one eighties. I'm sure you can see that. The point that was put in that kind of um, the armpit there, uh, that was. Um, Maybe you know, thinking that it's a ninety, 
it's it's not because the the, the horizontal these you know these these rectangles formed by these are just so much bigger than uh, than than these right so it, it's not a 90 but uh, I'll just I'll just answer my own question here this point here the center point of the um, polygon formed by the reflection lines is indeed a reflection center, a reflection, uh, I mean, rotation center. And so that would make this a CMM. So very similar to the last pattern, although they don't really look that much alike. It's because the other one was so close to a fourfold. Anyway, uh, but this is a CMM with that special rotation center in the middle. So this would be the same symmetrically as the regular brick pattern on the wall. And maybe now you can see it when you, when you look at it like that. Um, it's got that kind of half, half drop, they call it, um, character. All right, next, whoa. Notice here that the, uh, the the blue part this this part here is is not the same shape as the orange part. So we always say color doesn't matter. Well, here we don't even have to think about colors. The the, the shape of it is is just not the same. One eighty. Uh, yep. So one eighties. Where would they go? Uh, I guess that right there would be a one eighty, and then right there, and and right there. But in this case, unlike the previous two, where we had one eighties and we had the reflections. We don't have any reflections, right? It's a little surprising maybe, but uh, this one doesn't have any reflection. And it's because, like, if you look at that orange piece here, it, it's not the same as this. This blue piece has this uh, little thing like that, and this, this is more of a that's no, just a different shape. <laughs> I don't know how, how to describe shapes by with words so much, but uh, the the blue one has a pointy pointy end, and this one doesn't have any pointy uh, vertices. So that kind of takes away all in any of any idea of a vertical reflection, and uh, and also horizontal. So this this. Um, there's no reflections, but let's let's talk about glides for a second. Are, are there any glides? So you got the one eighties. See, I'm not seeing a glide either. See, if if there was a glide, let's say vertically, yeah, P two. You're right. Let's talk about this for a second. I, I'm gonna just simplify that. Um, like that. So if there was any kind of glide, then you would see that shape, you know, whatever flat iron or whatever this thing, I letter I, you would see it like that. It, let's say if this vertical line was a um, glide reflection line, then you would see it zigzag like that. Toss over to the other side and back, and that's not happening. So, uh, so no glide there. Okay, so just P2. Seems at first that it would have something more, but uh, not this time. All right. This 
this one's quite interesting. And the presence of those dots changed things a little bit. Yeah, this, this is cool because it, it seems like it's, um, I don't know, it, it, it makes me think of, um, I guess maybe that candy is all, only in Finland. Yeah, maybe I, this would be a very location specific reference. Hmm. Anyway, uh, what do you guys think? Sorry. You know what this is definitely very close to? It's definitely very close to um, 33434 uh, regular tiling, right? If I put those lines there, to to um, to make two triangles out of that diamond shape or the, the rhombus, uh, then um, this would be a three three four three four. But of course, with those dots, it it does change things. Yep, one eighty. Now. I keep saying about the dots, like if the dots weren't there, this point here would be a fourfold rotation center. You agree? You, know, you have this rhombus, this rhombus, this rhombus, this rhombus going around, you know, ring around the rosy there. But because of this dot, and you know, it's not in any of the other uh, rhombi, then. Uh, that, then that's out the window. It's it's true for all of these potential 90 degree rotation centers. So we have we have rotation still. Like this is a 180. This is a 180. And this one and this one. Right? See that? And as far as Reflections, we have them. A lot of 180s. But that, that illustrates how prevalent that type of rotation is out there. You're going to have a hard time finding any real threefold patterns. I can assure you that. If you find one, please include that in your project. So the question is, are all rotation centers on reflection lines? I feel like we've been asking this question for a long time now. Since the ancient Greeks, no, you know, ancient Greeks didn't know anything about this stuff. Well, I shouldn't say not anything because I'm sure they had an understanding uh, of, of repetition to some degree. But this system of classification really wasn't formalized until about 100 years ago. Now, if you think about how long the world has existed, and, and even within that, if you just think about how long the humans, us, have existed, 100 years is drop in a huge bucket. So we've only known about this stuff for 100 years or understood enough about it to categorize. And uh, that's that's kind of what I consider knowing. You know, if if you can put things in categories, um, and and do it all in only one way, then that constitutes knowing, in in my opinion. So we've only known about how to classify these things for a hundred years. So yeah, no, this question has not been asked by the Greeks. I I feel like I've been asking the same question many 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 times are all the rotation centers on reflection axes? And the answer is, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Thank you, Sanayo. So PMM. But how different does this PMM look from the others we've seen today? Yeah, that, it's because it flirts with something else. Now, there's so much of that, in to me, in successful design it, it it has almost like a 
it leads a double life. <laughs> you know, it it has this. You know what? It, it shows you something, but it then it takes it back. Okay, what about something like this? You see it all the time. And now we can talk about it like, uh, you know, geometry students. Or students of symmetry, I should say. The rectangle can be involved in different kinds of uh, patterns. Just because it has rectangles, it doesn't mean necessarily that it's a, a, a two-fold pattern. Uh, it often is, but not necessarily. Is there no rotation? I think we do have rotation. Uh, let me let me put a candidate here. Yeah, I see a 180 only. Also, I'm going to put a candidate there. Let's 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 kind of test it out. So, I like putting little X's in places where I'm kind of investigating. So, like let's say that X. Where would that go under a 180 degree rotation? It would go to this spot here. All right. So I'm kind of testing out this hypothesis that this is 180 degree rotation. What about what happens to another tile? Like let's say this this guy here. Ah, Matty, tile, glide. Yeah, you're, you're getting ahead of uh, ahead of the game here. But yes, you're right. So that tile would go there, and you know, you could you could pick any tile. Like, like this one, you could see, okay, what happens to this tile under a rotation uh, of 180 degrees here? So that would go here. Th so the further from the rotation center you are to begin with, of course, the further you'll end up on the other side. Okay, so anyway, so I think we can agree to the 180 degree rotation. So there's one there. And uh, do we have any others other than these, the centers of the tiles? This is the point in time when Mateos usually says, oh, I see it over there. And then he'll put a dot on it, usually blue. Expecting that to happen any second now. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Anyone else? Any other? Uh, any other dots to be put? I was thinking there, but it. I don't, I'm not sure if it really makes sense. Oh man. Oh man. Is it's it close? close. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> but uh, let, let me just, uh, you know, for the general good, <laughs> I'll. I'll I'll take it back. This point here is a rotation. Do you see it? OK, yeah. Yeah, this brick goes there. So anyway, it you know we're in a way, we're splitting hairs now. We already know that 180 is the, the smallest one. But, uh, but uh, you could probably also see that Reflections are not going to be a part of this uh, analysis. We don't have reflections. So you're not going to have to answer that question, are all rotation centers on reflection axes? You know, And sometimes it's good to work smart and maybe not necessarily so hard. So if you already know no reflections, then you don't, you, the, all, all you need to know is that it's a 180. Uh, even if there is this kind of uh, hard to see rotation center, you, you don't necessarily need it. However, like Mattis said earlier, we do have those glides. Would anyone like to attempt to put a glide reflection line there? I would love to see that. 
And Mateus, Fiona, please Can I repeat don't, that really quickly? It, don't do it. Yeah, I'm all my... yeah. Everyone is invited except for Mateus and Fiona. So, Ooh. yep, you're, you're out. You're, you're canceled. Uh, so we have Isabella, we have Alina. <laughs> no, no. You, you'll be right back in a, in there in the next one, okay? Uh, we have. Wait, so would we just be drawing like an arrow from one to another? Um, there's there's different ways to to, to illustrate the glide. But right now, I'm only looking for the glide reflection line, the line that, where you would reflect across and reflect and translate, reflect and translate. So once we get that line up there, then we can, it would be a whole line, you know, the, um, whether vertical or horizontal or whatever. Nope. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, that's not a, let's see, would that be? No, that's it. I'm okay, afraid so who, to Actually, no, no, it's not. No, we, we still don't have it. Okay. I'm going to clear the, I'm going to clear the board. Yeah, so far nobody has put it down. And you know, you also have a line tool. If you go to the um, the shapes, you have rectangle, ellipse, and line. So you can do a line with that. Nope. The yellow line is not a glide reflection line. It's all right. So sometimes if I'm looking for something like that, I'm thinking, would would any of this, especially because your motif is fairly small, like if that if one was a footprint of my left foot, where could the right foot go? What would be that kind of walking type of visual i'm thinking like it might be vertically through exactly where the center is because that's exactly the most like the... i don't know something like this i don't yeah to yeah that exactly really Boom. yeah that's exactly it yeah that's not even close to it that's like perfection yeah that's exactly it see uh let's say I'm not going to draw on it now. I'm going to point with this thing. Um, this, I, actually, uh, I, I usually do from the from bottom to top, although it doesn't matter. Um, this guy would be reflected and translated. Then this guy would be reflected and translated. It goes here. And see how the corners get cut like that? So the corners kind of play their own little game here. And and maybe you can see the zigzag even easier with the corners. By the, the I'm talking about the little triangles, these guys. Right. You can kind of see the, the zigzagging like that. Zig zag, zig, zag, zig, zag. And the, and, and these these whole bricks. Do that kind of I, I'm, I'm thinking kind of like footsteps like that all right also uh, you could do that uh, horizontally right Okay, anyway, uh, so uh, we have 180s, we have glides, so what would you call this?
the easy part is reading the, the flow chart. You know, if, if we can narrow down what it has, yep, PGG, that's right. Uh, then you should be able to definitely uh, go through the, the steps of analysis uh, in the flow chart. Okay, now these, uh, I mean, of course, these are very imperfect in the sense that um, there's, yeah, yeah, that there's like only one of these. Uh, where, where is it again? Brazil, right. Um, I love this pattern. I've never been to this place, but I definitely want to go. What what city was it in? Was it Rio de Janeiro? Is that where you're from, Mateus? I'm further south. Oh, okay. I know the the capital is Brasilia, right? And that's that's a little inland. Um, kind of like that sentence. You're on the coast, though? By the water, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, stay safe. I, I, I know that the the COVID numbers are not, not so uh, friendly over there. Um, but anyway, let's, um, let's talk about this pattern, shall we? Oh, whoops, we're running out of time. Maybe I'll come back to this. And then I have this one other one here. And you know, we can we can just go on forever and ever. Uh, there's, there's just a ton of patterns out there. And they're always one of the 17. You know, there's no repetition you can have in the plane uh, that's that's not one of those 17 options. It's, it's pretty cool uh, to know that. It's comforting, you know? <laughs> uh, so maybe we'll get back to that uh, next time. I do want to say, I, I want to uh, uh, tell you what the, the project's going to be. And I'm, I'm going to post this uh, shortly. And it's going to be something like, uh, what you saw just today, and the uh, the project would be something like um, finding. Hold on, let me. I need to find a. I have a verbal description of it somewhere, but uh, I can't seem to find it. Oh, okay, here. Take a picture of a pattern representing each of the five rotational categories. So none, 180, 120, 90, and 60. So you're going to be submitting five pictures. Uh, and uh, maybe you can fit them all in one page. Uh, or, or you can just put five files in one, one uh, submission. Uh, but most likely, you're going to have a hard time finding all five. I'm just guessing. Uh, and especially in this, you know, in these days of pan the pandemic, uh, you're not going to want to go out to, you know, every restaurant and, uh, you know, store and playground looking for these things. So just, you know, no big pressure here. If, if you can't find all five, do four. If you can't find all four, then you can substitute one uh, from an online source, uh, a picture that you didn't take yourself. But but the goal is to to take pictures of stuff that you to see around the house. Like I I have this uh, paper towel here. Uh, even the paper towel has uh, a, a printed pattern on it. And um, and these things really are everywhere. So uh, I'm going to take the um, I'm going to post the the, the project online right now and um, I guess bid you farewell uh, for the weekend I, I have a feeling that we might have to do one more lesson on these things and in fact I I think I know exactly what we should do um, instead of looking at the bunch of real life patterns 
uh, we can we can focus on the the different patterns using the same motif. So we'll we'll do that on Tuesday, and um, that'll I think that'll help you, you know, straighten things out in your mind. If you can't find four different rotational um, groups, just submit as many as you can find, and then you can fill them in later. You know, as long as you submit something in on time, then you can still get full credit. Alrighty, I will see you all next Tuesday. Uh, stay well, stay safe. I'll talk to you then.